Well, good morning. I hope everyone is well this morning. I'm Millard House, of course, the HISD superintendent, and today we welcome, as you can see behind me, several government officials and agency leaders who, who share the same top priority for our students and our, our communities, which is, of course, safety. Uh, as, a, as a father of, of two students in HISD and your superintendent, I can tell you that a, a safe journey to and from school for all students is always top of mind for me. We are happy to host an announcement of this sort at the historic Jack Yates High School, uh, which is a pillar, as you know, in this community. Over the past few months, you've heard several steps that we as a school district are taking to prepare for a variety of situations concerning safety. We've already upgraded fencing, added cameras, invested in police equipment, and so much more that, uh, that's on the horizon as well. Now as a district, we are always collaborating with our schools and community to assess what we have in place and really plan for the future as well. The work never stops because our environment continuously changes. Today, we take another step further in meeting the, the moment by continuing to collaborate with safety leaders and partners nationwide. We will continue to champion this work and look for new innovative ways to keep all of our communities safe. Once again, I'd like to welcome each of you, uh, each and every one of you today, uh, especially our partners behind us for ensuring that we continue to build the safest environment for our schools and together as a community. Thank you. It is an honor to be here in Houston here at Jack Yates and to share the stage with these tremendous dedicated public servants. My name is Kenneth Polite, and I have the great honor of serving as your Assistant Attorney General for the Department of Justice's Criminal Division. In that role, I have the honor of supervising over 1,400 public servants tasked with working on a wide range of criminal justice priorities, but I can tell you there is no greater priority for me or for this department than fighting violent crime. Our gathering here this morning is just our latest example of that commitment. You see all of the public servants here. They are in this community each and every day on the front lines of this fight, saving lives in this community. And I am honored to join that fight with you today. In partnership with the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Texas and our law enforcement partners, the Criminal Division is standing up a targeted initiative to fight violent crime here in Houston. Together, we will surge the tools and resources we use to investigate and prosecute violent crime nationally, including the use of RICO charges, and apply those tools to gangs who are terrorizing communities across this city. This new initiative will include prosecutors from the Criminal Division's Organized Crime and Gang Section, our nation's foremost experts in charging RICO prosecutions, alongside prosecutors from the U.S. Attorney's Office, as well as dedicated investigative agents, analysts, forensic experts from the FBI, the ATF, the Marshal Service, the Houston Police Department, the Harris County Sheriff's Office, as well as many other federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. Together, we will employ a data-driven approach to first identify and then prosecute the worst of the worst gangs and gang members who are disproportionately responsible for the violent crime gripping this community. Everyone should feel safe in their homes and their neighborhoods. Unfortunately, violent crime deprives too many of our communities of that fundamental security. I know all too well that the constant drumbeat of violent crime oftentimes keeps people from walking safely in their streets during the day or sleeping soundly in their beds at night. This mission touches close to me. I come from a family of law enforcement, including my brother Damien, who serves as an officer for the Houston Police Department. 
And like so many in our community, unfortunately, we have lost family members to street violence. So preventing others from suffering that loss, that pain from violent crime is what motivated me to serve first as an assistant U.S. attorney in New York, as the U.S. attorney in my hometown of New Orleans, and today as your assistant attorney general. We will never stop being vigilant in our pursuit of justice, particularly for victims of violent crime. But we cannot rely on prosecutions. We cannot rely on incarceration. We cannot rely on enforcement solely as our tool. It is an important tool, but it is not our only one. And that is why this initiative will include efforts to invest not just in enforcement, but in prevention, in intervention, and in reentry efforts. And we will do so in partnership with the department's Office of Justice Programs. In that regard, I am pleased to share this morning the news that the Department of Justice just this morning announced $100 million in grants to help communities across the United States to reduce gun crime and other serious violence. That includes $2 million going directly to Harris County right here in Houston. I am proud to have Cornelia Sigworth with us this morning who will highlight the tremendous work of OJP. But be clear, government cannot achieve long-term success by itself. We cannot achieve long-term success in any of these areas without the trust in the assistance of the community we seek to serve and protect. We need members of the public to step forward and speak out against violence occurring in their communities. And you see, while enforcement can remove criminal actors from the community, it can only improve those communities. Improvement for the long term, where members of the community stand with us to invest in prevention and intervention and reentry efforts that will break those cycles of violence. We will work hard today. We will work hard every day to build and strengthen those relationships of community trust. And that is why my team and I have been in this community meeting not just with law enforcement, but with faith leaders and community organizers and students and staff here at Yates High School, as well as business owners here in the Third Ward. This is my first visit to this tremendous high school. I promise you it will not be my last. Know that we will be part of this community going forward far after any single prosecution ends. We are not above, we are not below. We are not outside of this community. We are part of this community. And so to all of those assembled, to all those in this community, know that the criminal division stands ready to serve as your partner, as your neighbor in this critical fight to combat and prevent violent crime. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Lowry. I am the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Texas, and our, our main office is right here in Houston, Texas. I'm excited to be here today, along with Assistant Attorney General Polite and our law enforcement partners to announce this new initiative. We're taking a holistic approach to make our communities, this community, safer. To do this, we not only need to prosecute violent offenders, but we need to invest in prevention and reentry options. I'm part of the Houston community. I live here. I work here. Houston's my home. This initiative is an investment in the Houston community, and our goal is to make this community safer. You may ask how we plan to achieve this goal. We are focusing on the worst of the worst, the violentness of offenders, and developing cases against these criminals from the bottom up, a grassroots approach. To echo Assistant Attorney General Polite's comments, we must address these matters head on in multiple avenues with a myriad of resources. This initiative will address the violent crime problem in two ways. First, on the prosecution side. 
We are adding five trial attorneys from the department's criminal division to work alongside our Houston U.S. Attorney's Office assistant U.S. attorneys from our violent crime section. Together we will work coordinated, targeted, intelligence-driven efforts with our law enforcement partners as a team. We will develop strong cases where the defendants who possess the greatest danger to threats to the community will be arrested, will not be released on bond, and will receive significant prison sentences. But second, we're going to educate, train, and support the citizens of this community, our community. This will be possible with the Department of Justice, which will provide funding, which was announced today, for various programs. The funding for these programs will have a direct and indirect impact on the community and help curb violence. They will support local police departments and help support a variety of local and community groups. Some recent recipients right here in the Third Ward were teen and public service community, Change Happens, the YMCA, HISD, and there's more. And as announced today, there will be more coming. We will also work with programs designed to combat crime, but also that support community and victims during and after the violence. Examples are the Second Chance Program, reentry programs, preventing school violence, community policing and de-escalation training, as well as safeguarding communities and mentoring programs. This shows our commitment to be here beyond the case, beyond the prosecutions, and to support the neighborhoods and the victims. We will continue to do diligent, thorough, coordinated, and targeted efforts with all of our partners here today and scores and more of other dedicated individuals because it takes everyone to fight this violence. The bottom line is, we are here to prosecute the worst of the worst and stop the violence, but also to support you and the citizens of this community. And now it's my pleasure to turn over the microphone to one of your biggest advocates, uh, Chief Troy Finner. Good morning, everyone, afternoon. Houston Harris County, this is a big deal. I've talked about it and I've talked about it, the strong arm and our strong partnerships. I wanna thank all of my federal colleagues, local colleagues, um, the U.S. Uh, Attorney Lowry, and uh, just for you to come, um, it means a lot. Um, Attorney, Assistant Attorney General Galit, thank you for, for being here. There is one place for violent individuals, and that is in behind bar, bars, and that's, that's a fact. But what I like about this initiative, we're not just touching the criminals. You're touching and you're trying to help those who want the help. So I applaud that. But make no mistake about it. We all know in this community and any other community, it is a very small number of individuals that cause havoc in our city. Thank God for the partnership and what's coming. Um, a message uh, to our community, a message to those individuals. Straighten up or we're coming after you. And I'm, I'm just so proud. I don't want to take a long time today, but everybody knows our backlog in Houston Harris County is unlike any other uh, county in the nation right now. So thank you, DOJ, for stepping up and coming in and helping us. I'm honored to stand in this historic um, high school, Jack Yates High School. Everybody know I'm from Madison, but I'm proud to stand here today. And uh, it's, it's in third ward, but uh, look, I'm excited about it, and we're really looking forward to uh, going after those individuals that's really disrupting our community. So thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. My name is James Smith. I'm the special agent in charge of the FBI here in Houston. There's a reason why we're all here today. That's because violent crime is on the mind of many of Houstonians in our, in our minds. Houston is home to me and my family. We made it our home about a year ago. I'm, I'm taking, excuse me. So when we talk about violent crime in the community, I'm talking about violent crime in our community, your community. Violent crime in our community has claimed the lives of children, like five-year-old Kamaya Donaldson, nine-year-old Arlene Alvarez, 
two-year-old Micah Essen, Essesing, and his father Michael, and clergy people like Pastor Ronald Mouton. So violent crime does not discriminate. It can happen anywhere, to anyone, any place. Working with our local law enforcement here and our partners fighting, fighting violent crime isn't anything new to the FBI. We've always worked together in an effort through numerous task forces around the country and around the world. What the FBI will always welcome are more resources, like those announced today by Assistant Attorney General Polite. When it comes to public safety and protecting our community, the FBI will always search as many resources as possible. We will not spare any assets, including engaging the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit, analyzing evidence at the FBI lab in Quantico, Virginia. To keep us with to keep us with and to stay ahead of the threats we're facing, the FBI must keep doubling down on our partnerships with local, state, and federal partners. As, as, a, private, uh, as a private community and our public community, the crimes we're seeing are so diverse, so dangerous, so all-encompassing for any one agency to tackle. Our goal is to share information across the spectrum and to make sure we are all working together to identify and to stop the threats by arresting the individuals behind the most egregious crimes. The numerous task force officers embedded with our FBI agents are critical to our success. The FBI will use this, the new surge of DOJ resources as we lead federal investigations to take down violent gangs like the, we've done historically. Gangs, we might say, we call today the modern day mafia. Our goal is to not just put people in, in handcuffs for a day or two, but to build cases to cut off this modern day mafia at its knees. Putting the worst of the worst behind bars for a long time, including life in prison, by seeking federal charges as racketeering. That's exactly what FBI agents at the Houston field office did in August, when 10 MS-13 members were indicted on federal charges. That's the 10 most violent, brutal, and callous individuals out there. Last week, a Houston rapper and longtime gang member was sentenced to more than 23 years in prison, in federal prison, for trafficking drugs in, from a, his, a music studio across the street from a, a local high school. This gentleman, or this I should say monster, had been doing this for decades, trafficking drugs, drugs across the street from a high school. And his gang, is also responsible for numerous violent robberies, aggravated assaults, and homicides. The FBI arms extend beyond Houston to arrest criminals who fled after committing crimes, not only here in Houston, but around the world and around the country. The safety of our community isn't just the responsibility of law enforcement. It's everyone's responsibility. We can't do our job without the help of the public. Law enforcement relies on your tips. We need, we need you to share the information with us. So I'm proud to work with FBI personnel around the world that, who do this every day. I'm also grateful for our local law enforcement partners here to keep Houston safe. So thank you and have a good day. Good morning. Uh, my name is Fred Melnowski. I'm the special agent in charge of ATF here in Houston. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the criminal division um, for coming here and doing this project. It's an enormous opportunity for Houston. Um, it, I, we know that there was many cities that was considered, and there was only one that was chosen, and that was Houston. We know that many things went into the, many factors went into that decision. Um, one of them was partnerships, right? We have phenomenal law enforcement partnerships here, as you see today. Um, but another reason was the foundation of crime gun intelligence that ATF has built here over the last few years. Um, in the last few years, we have doubled the number of NIBIN sites in the Houston metro area. And for those who don't know what NIBIN is, it's the National Integrated Ballistics Information Network. You've heard me talk about it lots of times over the last few years. Um, it allows us to take shell casings from one shooting, image them, and put them in a database. And then with, if that same gun is used in another shooting, pick up those shell casings, image them, and match those so that when we recover the gun, we know everything that gun's been used for and the individual that had it, what they're responsible for. As a result, 
there's now more than 50 law enforcement agencies in the Houston metro area contributing ballistic evidence to NIBIN. Um, also, in the past year, over 800 suspects were arrested with links to shootings that came from NIBIN leads. In addition to that, next week, ATF is standing up the Houston Area Crime Gun Intelligence Center, also going to be called the Hack Chick. This will be a multi-agency intelligence center with 12 crime analysts identifying the source of the firearms and linking those shootings together. Last year in the Houston metro area, law enforcement recovered 12, more than 12,000 firearms and traced them through ATF's E-Trace system. But no agency has the resources to study and analyze that mountain of intelligence from the results of all those traces. So this Crime Gun Intelligence Center was stood up specifically to take on that mission. ATF and our partners will use the crime gun intelligence along with other law enforcement techniques to build RICO and Vicar cases against some of the most violent gangs and crews in, in the metro area. I'd like to finish up by saying, this project is not intended for law enforcement to be heavy handed. Specifically, this project is to focus on trigger pullers and traffickers. And what I mean by traffickers is narcotics traffickers and firearms traffickers that are putting guns in the hands of criminals in our community. One last thing. Last year, in the city of Houston, almost 4,000 guns were stolen from vehicles. That is a major source of firearms to our criminals in this city. I am asking all the public to take responsibility and do their part and not leave guns unaccounted for in vehicles. You can lock them in your trunk, you can cable lock them to the seat post, you can, there's the uh, safes for automobiles, safes for firearms are very cheap these days. You can have them mounted on your, in your car. We are asking the public, I know, you know, it's a Texas thing, right? I've, I've been here for six years now. I know they're gonna be there. I'm not telling people not to carry guns. I'm telling them do not leave them unsecured in their vehicle. If you get a gun stolen out of your car, you're not a bad person but you are contributing to the violent crime in our community. Um, appreciate your time today. Thank you. The Harris County Sheriff's Office is fully supportive and behind uh, this initiative. Uh, we want to appreciate all our partners that are gathered here today, local, state, and federal. We're at our best when we work together. And I believe, and I think you've already heard, that one of the reasons Houston Harris County was selected is because those partnerships are strong. For us collectively, our North Star, what's top of mind is public safety of our community, reducing violent crime. That's what drives us each and every day. And we do tremendous work already. But today's announcement further strength, strengthens that message. It sends a message that we're gonna do everything we can. We're gonna use every resource available to make sure that we're dismantling gangs, that we are dismantling criminal networks, and that's important. And that's something that we're gonna to continue to do, and we're very grateful. I personally wanna thank the Biden administration. I wanna thank Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland, uh, Assistant Attorney uh, General uh, uh, Polite and everyone that made it possible, the surging of resources, the additional funding will greatly help our community. Now, we're not unique from other parts of the country. We all know, and the uptick in violent crime around the country has been well documented. But again, what sets up us apart is we have the infrastructure of the partnerships. We have those relationships that we already work together. We're gonna continue to double down our, our analysis-driven operations, making sure that we're sharing resources. We each bring unique perspectives and skill sets to the table, but it's how we leverage that. And uh, Superintendent, how, I think it's important as well, uh, as a proud uh, HISD, a uh, product of HISD, didn't come to Yates High School, uh, but a proud member of HISD, it's important that we're here at this historic Yates High School because we don't, we want to make sure that we're sending a message that the community is a part of this. Too often they may see us because we may be on the front lines and we're visible because of our badges and uniforms and being out in patrol cars, but our federal partners, our state partners are out there uh, uh, lock, locked in arms working with us. And it's important for the community to see that we're working for them, that they're a part of this effort, that they're part of the solution as well. 
And that's why we wanted to be here in a high school because high schools, Yates High School in particular, are the hubs in local communities. And so this is a shared responsibility for all of us. And I appreciate the approach of not only enforcement, we need strong enforcement, but we also need intervention and prevention. And that's what you're hearing today. here today. It's a holistic approach. We're going to surge resources. We're going to make sure we're using federal laws that are in place to make sure we're working strategically with the end, uh, with the end goal in mind that we are going to do everything to disrupt violent crime here in Houston, Harris County. It's been ongoing, but it starts today where we're going to make sure that we're doubling down. Uh, briefly in Spanish, quiero agradecer a todos que están aquí. Todos estamos colaborando con agencias locales, estatales y federales también. Uh, le quiero, quiero agradecer a la administración, a todos los que se encuentran aquí, para apoyar este esfuerzo, para unirnos en esta batalla contra el crimen violento en nuestra comunidad. Somos más fuertes cuando, tra cuando trabajamos unidos y hoy es lo que estamos haciendo. Estamos anunciando que vamos a trabajar juntos a nuestros compañeros federales con el Departamento de Justicia van a poner más recursos en esta comunidad. ¿Por qué esta comunidad? Porque sí, sí tenemos crimen violento en esta comunidad, pero también tenemos esta colaboración entre varias agencias, los líderes de las agencias policíacas, y por eso estamos aquí, estamos en la comunidad, para decir que vamos a trabajar muy fuerte para toda la comunidad, para disminuir crimen violento en nuestra comunidad. Thank you. Good morning. Um, excuse me. I'm Cornelia Sigworth. I'm the Associate Deputy Director at the Bureau of Justice Assistance uh, in Washington. Um, I'm here on behalf of Acting Assistant Attorney General Amy Solomon and BJA Director Carlton Moore, who are unable to be here today. We are proud to stand with our partners and colleagues at the DOJ Criminal Division and the Southern District of Texas U.S. Attorney's Office and all of our local law enforcement partners um, in this initiative. BJ strengthens the nation's criminal justice system and helps America's state, local, and tribal justice jurisdictions reduce and prevent crime um, to reduce recidivism and promote fair and safe criminal justice systems. BJ works with communities, governments, and nonprofits and organizations to accomplish these goals. We accomplish this through, the, through this mission uh, through grant investments, practitioner education, development of tools, and stakeholder engagement. Our primary avenues for providing assistance to jurisdictions and communities are our competitive grant programs and our no-cost technical assistance. For example, BJA supports the Law Enforcement Mental Health Collaboration Support Center, which offers free training, resources, and support to communities seeking to improve their law enforcement and community responses to people with behavioral health conditions or intellectual and developmental disabilities. In fact, both Harris County Sheriff's Department and the Houston Police Department are two of the 14 national mental health learning sites that support peer-to-peer -peer learning from departments across the country. So folks come from all over to see these teams. In addition to these no-cost resources, BJA provides grant funding to jurisdictions that apply to implement programs like Justice and Mental Health Partnership efforts. One of our top priorities is our community-based violence intervention and prevention initiative, otherwise known as CVI. You heard a little bit about that already. Through this program, BJ funds local efforts to prevent and reduce violent crime in communities by supporting comprehensive evidence-based violence intervention and prevention programs, including efforts to address gang and gun violence. These are based on partnerships, among community residents, local government agencies, victim service providers, community-based organizations, law enforcement, hospitals, researchers, and other community stakeholders. And since we're here today at Jack Yates High School, I want to highlight the Stop School Violence Program. This is a critical priority for the community and for BJA. Through this program, BJA makes investments in school climate improvement, behavioral threat assessments, technology such as anonymous reporting systems, and innovative student response efforts to prevent and reduce violent crime in and around schools. While it's impossible for me to cover the breadth of the programs that BJA supports for communities and jurisdictions, I would encourage everyone to, to go to our website, bja.gov, for additional information and for other funding opportunities. Right now is the perfect time to start thinking about grants and the grant cycle. 
um, and what the needs are for next year. Uh, we expect our application period to start opening in January, um, and then new opportunities on a rolling basis from there. So um, thank you for your time. I think violent crime uh, um, with gangs involved, it, it is up. Um, overall, as you know, we talk about the stats just about every week. Uh, the violent crime is down. But we're no different from any other jurisdiction around the nation right now. Gang members are causing havoc, and, and this is part of this, this, this initiative. So. Sure. Uh, thank you for the question. And I, to that point, I uh, just want to highlight that I'm not the only person from the criminal division with me. Uh, my senior counsel, my principal deputy, my deputy, as well as the head of the organized crime and gang section are all with us today. Many of these individuals are going to be leading this initiative, and these are individuals who have dedicated their careers as prosecutors to investigating and prosecuting exactly the types of cases that we're talking about. You already heard reference from our FBI special agent in charge to one of the MS-13 prosecutions that was very successful here in Houston. That type of prosecution has been replicated across this country, not just dealing with MS-13 defendants, but any number of, of organized crime uh, organizations that are operating across this country and engaging in, as you've heard, gun trafficking, human smuggling and human trafficking, as well as uh, violent crime activity. With that said, this pilot initiative is the first of its kind uh, under this administration. We selected Houston for a very important reason. Like many communities across this country, it is a community that continues to struggle with violent crime on a day-to-day -day basis. But what is unique about Houston is the partnerships and the collaboration across state, local, and federal law enforcement that has become a hallmark of the way that we investigate and prosecute these cases in this jurisdiction. And we are proud to amplify their work through this initiative. Sure, and I will, I will welcome my partners to, to, to step forward and offer comments uh, from any of our local law enforcement uh, representatives here who are working on this on a day-to-day -day basis. What I can tell you as a national trend, uh, we are seeing individuals oftentimes engaging in violent crime, but what we are trying to bring to bear here is analyzing the data behind those shootings, uh, using our legal analysts and forensic experts to make those connections and identify where those individuals that often appear to be acting as individuals, uh, as sole shooters, and connecting the dots to other activity, other shootings that may have happened, other actors that may be operating within those communities, outside of those communities, but also in Houston, and even interstate, and then bringing that data to bear to identify where we can train our very limited resources on the worst of the worst that are operating in that, that organizational fashion. Ted, I think what's, impo what's important here is uh, we know, um, and, and just around the, the nation, I mean, gang members, they commit crimes. But what you see here, we want to stop all individuals from slipping through the crack. When they're organizing to commit crime and terrorize our community, you see the strong arm of the federal, the local, and the state governments working together. And that's what uh, this is bringing to the table. I'll just add a very 
a little bit more, Ted, as well. Uh, we're trying to identify those prolific shooters by analyzing the data, working together with our resources so it's not a fragmented response. Uh, we do find that there's a lot of crews that are out there either focused on specific crimes, such as catalytic, catalytic converters, which we know far too well here. We lost one of our deputies to one of those uh, alleged crews. And so it's about trying to connect the dots that connect the dots. Sometimes we do it very well in our individual agencies, but collectively we're here to say we want to make sure that we're not missing anything and that we're uh, really focused, uh, surgical focus, to making sure that we're dismantling those criminal networks that, that pass these guns around uh, from one shooter to another, from one, uh, one criminal element to another, as well as dismantling those, dismantling those human trafficking networks as well that, that use human trafficking to fuel other criminal activity. Uh, and that we're also focused, I think the intervention and prevention side is that we're seeing a lot of younger shooters out there as well in their teens. Um, and, and that's why sometimes when I post something where we're responding, I'll put the age because some of these shooters are in their teens. And, and many of them are being recruited to enter gangs to then uh, perhaps, uh, you know, be able to, to have a more lenient Senate. So we want to make sure that we're dismantling that whole network, and it really take we all again we all bring uh, individual expertise, uh, but but how do we bring it together to strengthen one another? Because one agency can't do it alone. Hey, Ted, let me just add to that. Also, you know, we've spoken about this many times, right? Some of them are just one-off shootings, right? And I will tell you, four years ago, we didn't have good visibility on shootings being connected, but. You know, as I said, we had 800 suspects arrested this year or in the past 12 months in the metro area that are linked to shootings that now we know are linked to shootings. We just didn't know that before. So it's not, we're not perfect, right? We can get better as law enforcement, but we are way ahead of where we were three or four years ago on knowing what's going on and standing up this Crime Gun Intelligence Center in six months, a year from now, we're going to be a lot more knowledgeable about the flow of guns. You know, 12,000 guns getting recovered by law enforcement. And I told you 4,000 were stolen out of cars. Law enforcement didn't recover every single one of those 4,000. But even if they had, that's another 8,000 guns that come from somewhere else, right? So we don't have a great visibility on where it is. We've got to stop the flow of guns to these groups uh, if we're going to stop these shootings and violent crime. So we're going to get better at this. Um, but we know some shootings, and we know like some of the armed robberies are neighborhood crews that they're doing it for a bigger element, right? And they're, there's older, you know, the old Gs are directing the younger guys to do these robberies and these shootings. We know that. So now we're having a much better, or we're doing better with tying those people together and those guns together. And so this pro timing is perfect. It's kind of like the stars aligned this fall with a lot of things came together. Crime is going down a little bit, which give us a tiny bit of breathing room, but it's nowhere close to where we want it to be. And talking with the sheriff and the chief, we're all in this, and the FBI SAC, we're all in this together to get that violent crime rate down to, you know, before the pandemic and even lower than that if we can. So I hope that answers your question. Can you talk about how this is different from city one phase crime initiative, or will this help with that initiative? Because you already got something like this in place with the city to kind of help with violent crime. Yeah, the, the significance of this is you bring in that strong arm. If we're dealing with a mostly a one safe, we do have our federal partners, but not to this level. Um, make no mistake about it. What's driving our crime is the backlog. And, and the uh, U.S. Attorney spoke about it. Getting individuals arrested, getting them locked up with no bail, and then having a, a trial and getting them locked up for many years. That's what's going to drive the crime down in my opinion. Thank you. And I just want to add a little bit as well. In our own respective jurisdictions, you know, we're all utilizing different strategies to, to combat crime. Uh, I don't think that, that only one strategy is going to be the, the thing that solves everything. So we all know our respective areas. I know, for example, in, in, in unincorporated Harris County, we're starting to see really good success in, in, in diving into our micro zones. Uh, we know that those, those more minor uh, areas are, are producing a lot of crime, and where we're focused on that, we're seeing great, great results already. Uh, we're, we're proud of the information that we've learned and gained by being a PSP partner, a public safety partnership. It's a federal program. We've really gained a lot on that. So we're all working together, but we also collaborate as well, uh, bringing our federal partners, working with the Te uh, Texas Anti-Gang Center, 
uh, with George and others to make sure that, again, we're layering resources, different strategies, different deployments. We've worked in the, with the state in the past, like on Operation North Star years ago and other similar things. So I think it's a matter of, again, no one can do it all, but we know that what happens in unincorporated Harris County impacts the city of Houston itself and vice versa. You know, we got to make sure that we're staying ahead of some of these, uh, you know, criminal networks that are out there. Uh, and so that's what we're trying to do is it, it just amplifies some of the work that they're doing. It's not coming to replace and saying this is the new program. No, it's simply coming to amplify surge where we can, uh, both through funding, through resources, through uh, the power of the uh, federal partnerships. And so we really, really are excited about this and we anticipate seeing great success. Yeah, well, I want to speak a little bit more on this, too, and the fact that the difference is when you bring the federal arm in, you're talking about the entire world mm -hmm. because we all have resources that are spread out in various countries and the criminals are not just targeting Houston here. We have criminals who are communicating with gang members from around the world who are calling the shots. I can tell you like mm -hmm. back in 2012, we had a case here in Houston where three juveniles were murdered. And those shot callers in El Salvador were the ones giving the green lights to the gang members here to commit these murders. So that's where the federal arm comes in, is that we spread out all over the world. In a matter of seconds, we can reach out to our, our colleagues in other parts of the country, and parts of the world, that um, locally you just cannot do. Thank you. I'm going to say this real quickly because I wanted to stay about this. And I want to ask y'all something. A gun that's in somebody's house or just on the street somewhere, when they bring it in to us, Ivan, we run it, and you can trace back. But if you don't have that gun, you don't have anything. So we use that as an opportunity for that. But I'm going to leave it at that, and we'll talk about that later, okay? Thank you.